you call your mom every single day. How the heck does that person, how are they that productive, accessible, right. and gracious with their time? But Don't limit over. me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't limit I'm, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> over, over $100 million. Is to understand what I want today in a trajectory of what I think I want in the future. If they have to walk six miles three times a day to go fetch water, they can't go to school. Who I helped make their first million dollars. I was mentoring him. And he went and bought a Lambo when he made okay. his first million dollars. And I got upset. <laughs> The Avenue of the Strongest is a podcast dedicated to exploring the lives and experiences of the most inspiring individuals from around the world. Each episode features interviews with fascinating guests who share their insights and wisdoms on a variety of topics, including education, impact, motivation, health, and learning. I'm your host, Ania Chowdhury. And Vlad Suleiman. Our next guest needs no introduction. It is an absolute pleasure for us to sit down today with the one and only David Melter. I'll tell you what's the most important thing is how. How are you going to do it? Most people think that happiness is enough regardless of how much money they have, what relationships they have, what they've achieved. They think that happiness is enough even over their health. David is a renowned entrepreneur, speaker, sports executive, show host, and best-selling author who has dedicated his life to helping others achieve their goals and dreams. When we let our ego get in our way, ego is the loss, the fear of loss. So the need to be right, the need to be offended, the need to be hurt, fearful. When, when that trajectory changes, what happens is you continually go the wrong way. So my job as a coach is to say, let's get into the enjoyment of the direct pursuit of my potential. He's the co-founder of Sports One's Marketing, one of the biggest sports agencies in the world. David is also the chairman of the Unstoppable Foundation, a nonprofit humanitarian organization whose mission is to ensure every child has access to education. David very much embodies the mindset of I get to do this instead of I have to do this and is on a mission to empower a billion people around the world to be happy. David, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me and only one minor correction. I'm in a mission to empower over a billion over people. A billion people. <laughs> yeah, don't don't limit don't limit me, but I'm ready to go. Thanks for having me. Awesome. This podcast is sponsored by Argo Prep, an award-winning ed tech company serving over a million students nationwide. We understand that as parents, you want to ensure that your child receives the best education possible. Say hello to Argo Prep. With over 15 plus educational awards earned in just the past year, Argo Prep's platform offers your child video lessons, quizzes, drills, printable worksheets, and more. Best of all, your Argo Prep subscription comes included with four comprehensive digital workbooks that cover all four subjects, math, PLA, science, and social studies. Visit argoprep.com today and start your free trial. Awesome. Thank you. And of course, happy International Happiness Day to you as well. So listen, we have a couple of things in common, but the, one, the number one thing that we have in common, which I admire so much, is that you call your mom every single day. As soon as I saw that post, that was the one that resonated, resonated with me the most. People call me crazy all the time. We say, you call your mom every single day? Listen, my calls don't last for more than 60 seconds, just like yours. I know so many people do not call their mom often, once every couple of weeks, maybe once a month. David, why do you call your mom every single day? Well, for me, I want to make sure she knows the four things uh, that make her most happy. Uh, she's one of the most relative, most important people in my life. I wouldn't be here literally and figuratively if it wasn't but for my mom. So as just a small uh, reward, knowing what I feel like as a parent, I just want to remind my mom every day uh, to make her happy. The four things that I feel, one, I want to let her know I'm happy because uh, that's most important to her. Two, I wanted to let her know that I'm healthy, which is also very yeah. important to her. I also want her to know that I appreciate her, meaning that she adds so much value uh, to my life every single day, whether she's with me or not. And then finally, that I love her. And I think that if we realize that one minute a day equals more than an hour every Saturday, uh, <laughs> and my mom's 80 years old. So under, you know, your uh, thought pattern of, you know, some people every once a month, I know people that only visit their mom once a year. Yeah. You know, if your mom's 80 years old, 
And the average age of in America of a lifespan is 79 years old. You know, I'm on borrowed time, so I'm not willing to only see my mom, possibly see my mom once, twice, three, four, or even 10 more times to 90. You know, I, I want to be with her every single day, 365 times a year. Uh, and, you know, it is a mutually beneficial thing to speak to your mom and let them know what they want to hear every day, that you're happy, healthy, appreciate, and love them. No, I love that. And I really, really admire that. So for those of you who don't call your mom every single day, just try. Listen, when you call your mom, it's to let them know that you're safe and healthy. It's it, And it's not just you're not doing it for them. Trust me, it really helps you out. You're not going to immediately realize that, but you're going to realize that in the long run. It's going to really help you out. Now, Dave, your journey has been nothing short of remarkable. You went from playing D3 football in college to becoming a millionaire just several months after law school to now running multiple companies. I can't even name them all. Hosting and producing shows, traveling all around the world to speak. Not just that, you're also a husband and a father, all different roles. It's truly impressive. So, David, how do you manage to excel in so many different areas of your life without overextending yourself? Well, I have uh, five daily practices that allow me to utilize time with three different uh, lenses. One, productivity, how much value am I providing to others? Accessibility, being accessible to others, all of those different businesses, people, crowds, audiences, communities and also accessing what I want from others. Uh, in other words, in that access, creating a community of people that are looking to help me, know people that will help me, looking for my help and people that I know that could help them. Uh, and then finally, that lens of gratitude. Everything, all the activities every day in a trajectory towards what I think I want, activity I planned, activity I don't have planned, an activity called sleep, which takes up a third of our lives, <laughs> activity I get yeah. paid for, activity I don't get paid for. So these five daily practices that I have, which by the way, I am more than happy to send to everyone in your community for free, along with my book. I'll pay for the book, shipping and sign it. All you gotta wow. do is email me, put it in your notes, david at dmelter.com. I'll send it for free because it will change your life. You see, time is a dependent variable of all matter, subjective and objective. And if we utilize it, in the trajectory of what we think we want, it's going to aggregate the productivity, accessibility, and gratitude. It's going to compound the productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, and it's going to accelerate. All three things allow you, as you look at Richard Branson or Elon mm -hmm. Musk or some of the other people that you just wonder, like, how the heck does that person, how are they that productive, accessible, right. and gracious with their time? It's because they are students of their time. They pay attention to and give intention to what they think, say, do, believe, and feel in a trajectory of what they think they want every single day. Hmm. David, uh, I think everybody know you from the story of when you lost $100 million. <laughs> over. But Don't limit over. me. Over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> over. Over $100 million. <laughs> But uh, what caught my attention is that in one of the interviews, uh, you said, I learned the importance of weeding out negative influences and finding mentors who can help with a specific knowledge or skills. I absolutely agree with you because we become like people we spend the most time with. It is essential to surround ourselves with positive influences and mentors who can guide us towards success. I also know that you are a firm believer in the power of mentorship. So with that being said, could you tell us about your mentor who had a significant impact on your life and career? Well, I've had and have blessed to have a, a lot of them. I currently, the oldest uh, mentor I've had, the most time I've spent is a sleep uh, mentor uh, because I find that a third of my life is spent sleeping and most people go to bed at night and wake up more tired in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. So to give me the access recovery that I want in my life to plateau and grow, I started with sleep. Um, although I've been mentored by Bob Proctor and Jack Canfield and Blaine Bartlett and some of the world's sad guru, Deepak Chopra, uh, and Dr. Shaw, Dr. And Master Shaw are all masters and mentors of mine. Uh, I would tell you the most significant mentor I've had is the sleep coach that I still have today. Uh, when you talked about, you know, how do I get productive, accessible, and gracious, I would, Last week alone was, 
you know, 36 hours in Dubai, 36 hours in Mexico City, seven different wow. paid opportunities to speak. Still did my coaching, my uh, all, all the other activities, family. I ended up celebrating my son's birthday on Friday. My daughter came in from Indiana, had a date day on Sunday, a variety of different things. How? That's a because schedule. I'm utilizing my sleep to yeah. plateau and grow, not to live my life like a tube, like most people, food in, food out. So I love probably that. unexpectedly, my sleep coach is the most impactful because it's impacted an entire third of my life. Although Sadhguru, Deepak Chopra, Dr. Shaw spiritually have had a great impact and Jack Canfield, Bob Proctor, Wayne Dyer uh, on uh, Napoleon Hill have had a great impact on me with the reconciliation of money and spirituality. Well, I, th I think nobody even was thinking about the sleep coach. This is first time I actually uh, see somebody speaking about it. So um, let's dive into the goal setting and visualization. So again, in an uh, interview with Forbes, you mentioned the importance of goal setting and visualization by saying, visualization and goal setting are critical components to achieve success in any aspect of life. By visualizing our goals and creating a clear path of action, we can manifest our desires into reality and achieve our full potential. So there are many techniques, including writing down goals, creating vision boards, using positive information, setting smart goals, meaning specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, and many others. So what are your favorite techniques and how can individuals effectively set and visualize their goals, and manifest them into reality? Yeah, I don't care what mediums you use for visualization. Uh, where I separate myself and distinguish myself in the idea of visualization or manifestation is to understand what I want today in a trajectory of what I think I want in the future. So I'm visualizing what I want today in that trajectory of what I think I want in the future, but I also am reconciling the meaning of my past, the defined moments, setbacks, failures, and mistakes of my past aligned with where I think I want to be as well. You see, there's two types of fear, fear of the past, which manifests itself in uh, regret and guilt. And then there's fear of the future, which manifests in anxiety and worry. And if we can identify those in the trajectory of what we think we want. So in my vision board, my journaling, the uh, screensavers on my phone, yeah. there's so many different modalities and that's irrelevant because as long as you are thinking, saying, doing, believing, and feeling in a trajectory of what you think you want, and aligning the meaning of the mistakes, failures, and setbacks with that trajectory, you're going to expedite the manifestation process. And so many people, they write something on a board, you know, and they think that that's going to do it. No, you have to do everything towards buying that house, say everything in the trajectory of buying that house, think everything exactly. in the trajectory, believe it, and even feel it in the trajectory. And the only way you can do that is if you align the meaning of your past as well as reduce, dissipate, and dissolve the fear of the future. So if you look at my bankruptcy, so many people, you know, I lost over a hundred million dollars. So many yeah. people make that their victimization, why they can't do anything. They're too afraid to move forward in the future to make the same mistakes. I give it a different meaning. It saved my life and saved my wife and, you know, in my marriage. So for me, it's a catalyst. I don't see pain, setbacks, failures, and mistakes, you know, to me that are, are anything other than an indicator that I have a better place to be or a better situation to be in. David, I would love to learn more about your foundation, the Unstoppable Foundation, whose mission is to ensure that every child on the planet receives access to a lifelong gift of education. In your book, Connected to Goodness, you emphasize the importance of giving and its relationship to success. Please, I'd love to learn more about what goes on at the Unstoppable Foundation. Yeah, so I'm the chairman of Unstoppable Foundation, and what we do is create sustainable villages. So we don't just give money or create medical care, water. And we start with water. Believe it, water is, you know, the number one key to providing education to children because if they have to walk six miles three times a day to go yeah. fetch water, they can't go to school. If they don't have fresh yeah. water, they don't have fresh food. If they don't have fresh water, they get dis-ease. So we start with water 
and then we go to medical care, and then we go into nutrition, then we go into education, and then we cap it off with some financial literacy. And we mm. create sustainable villages where within five years we leave, right? Mm. We, wow. we okay. help them build right. the systems and the structure and education to continue it by themselves. So uh, we have impacted millions of people uh, in uh, all over the world, but specifically I've been working in Kenya and the Masamari, uh, building 17 sustainable villages already, a college, high schools, uh, and it mostly has impacted women, especially who are married off uh, so that the family can get a cow or a sheep, you know, to guys, yeah. my, you know, yeah. a 14 year old is married off to guys my age. Yeah. Like, wh where's yep. the education there? And now yeah. we have these wonderful young ladies who want to be, you know, engineers and doctors and judges and all types of great things. Uh, and uh, we're changing the world uh, with the Unstoppable Foundation and we won't be stopped. I also am the ch chief chancellor of Junior Achievement University, uh, where we're the seventh largest NGO in the world. Uh, and we got nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize uh, by uh, supporting entrepreneurs 15 to 25 years old all around wow. the world. We have 100 million alumni. And wow. uh, I believe that entrepreneurs, as do both of you, uh, will save the world. You know, we can recycle and we should all that we can but that's not gonna save the oceans from the plastic. What's gonna right. save the oceans from the plastic is an entrepreneur who turns that plastic into energy or food and uh, makes billions of dollars from doing so. That's what's gonna save this world. David, how much more happiness does that bring you than a Rolex or a sports car or any of the objective things that, you know? I, that's a really good point because I believe money is important. Uh, it doesn't buy you love or happiness. You know, the Porsche, the Ferraris that I've owned didn't bring me love or happiness, right. but it allows me to shop, right? right? And if I shop for the right things for the right reasons, that'll bring great joy into my life. But I will tell you a quick story because I had a client, a young man who I helped make their first million dollars. I was mentoring him and he went and bought a Lambo when he made okay. his first million dollars. And I got upset. I yeah. called him and I'm like, man, I'm going to, not have, I'm not gonna be able to work with you. You're not listening or learning from me. I got to prioritize other people that are going to learn from me. He said, whoa, 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 Mr. Meltzer, I did exactly what you said. I said, then why'd you buy the Lambo? He said, you told me money allows you to shop for the right things for the right <laughs> reasons. He said, when I drive my Lambo, I'm from the inner city where a, a bunch of inner city kids are. When I drive my Lambo, those kids come up to me and they say, what do you do? You a musician? Are you an athlete? You deal drugs. What do you do to get a car like this, man? I, I want to do what you do. And he gets out of his car and he says, I read books and I help people. Wow. And I said, wow. yeah. touche, man. That Lambo <laughs> definitely is the right thing it. to buy because it's going to have a great impact. And that's a good reason to buy a Lambo. So it's not just inanimate objects by themselves. It's the reason and the purpose behind what we buy in order to effectuate your mission in life, your passion, your purpose, and use that profit profitability for those purposes. Wow, that's I, I, I really, really love that story. David, thank you so much for spending so, some time with us today. I wanna ask you, what's one piece of advice that you can leave our audience today? If there's one piece of advice that you wanna leave our listeners with, we have a lot of parents and teachers. We specialize in kindergarten to eighth grade. You know, teachers are burned out right now, but we would love one last advice from you. Well, I'm going to give the piece of advice I wish I would have gotten when I was 18, when I was 28, 38, 48, and I'm sure I'll be giving it to myself at 58 someday. <laughs> Three words will change your life. Ask for help. People ask me all the time, how the heck did a guy like you, so educated, so successful, so many great relationships who treated people so kindly, how could a guy like you lose everything? I'll tell you, I didn't ask for help. I thought I was Midas. I yeah. thought I knew what I didn't know, that everything I touched was going to turn to gold. All I had to do was live in radical humility by finding people that sat in a situation that I wanted to be in and ask for help. Please, everyone, live in a value-add world, not a zero-sum game. Know that when you ask for help, you bring great joy and happiness to the person that can help you as much as you being helped. And all those that witness that 
also will be brought joy and happiness. And that's my mission is to bring that joy and happiness to everyone by appreciating what we have, acknowledging it, acquiring the knowledge by not having any more, giving it away, and then asking for help so you can get more to appreciate and give away as well. I thank you both for the opportunity to share with the audience. Please have them email me. I'll give those exercises, guides, and my books for free for your community, david at dmeltzer.com. We certainly will. David, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. Thank you, guys. I'll do this again. We'll see you soon. Thank you.